Let's get it. Which one's your favorite? Mine's Tracer. She's like, she is not the cavalry team. You're one of those heroes, aren't you? Before me, I see the future. Human. Machine. You know there's more out there, don't you? Even the best journeys end. But a new one is right around the corner. Did the bottom thing go away? Hello? Let's take him to the wasteland. One punch is all I need. Nice work, team. Keep it moving. It's maxed out. Are you? Are you guys fucking? How loud do you want the juice? Get in there. That takes a team to tango. Literally doesn't go higher than this. I have everything maxed out. Even OBS is maxed out. Like it doesn't go higher than this. So, why? Hello, everyone. I am Zoe Schwind, and earlier this week, the community was treated to some massive news regarding Overwatch 2. Of course, the biggest announcement by far was the news that Overwatch 2 will arrive on October the 4th as an always-on, always evolving life service game that will be free to play for everyone. Now, if you're like me. You're eager to learn more, and that is why I'm here today at the Blizzard campus to better understand the decisions behind the announcements, find out what they mean for the players, and, with some luck, uncover a few new game details for you at home. And be sure to stay tuned for the world premiere of the new cinematic The Wastelander, which was teased just a few days ago. So with that, let's get into it. Joining me are Overwatch game director Aaron Keller and production director Paul Hale. First, how are you two doing? I'm doing great. Excited. Yes, me too. So excited to be talking about this. And I'm so excited to have you both here. Now, uh, there was a ton of news which dropped over the weekend, and the community has been buzzing. And I'm excited to be able to sit down with you two now to unpack all of this for everyone watching at home. Now, the biggest announcement had to be the news that Overwatch 2 is releasing on October 4th as a free-to-play live service. That's incredible and that must be very, very exciting for you and your team. Yep. Yeah, Overwatch 2, it's been a labor of love for our, our team. We're all dedicated to creating a game that our community will enjoy for years to come. We also want players to feel like there was always something new for them to play or experience in the game. These goals really led us down the path of developing Overwatch 2 as an always-on living game. One that continues to evolve and expand through seasonal content drops and keeps the game as fresh and fun to play long after it turns on. We're lucky to have such a passionate and creative set of players, and we know that they've been craving more ways to play the game they love so much. In recent years, we haven't done a good enough job at delivering that for our fans, and we feel their frustration. Touch we took a hard look at our strategy for Overwatch 2 to make sure that we could deliver new heroes, new maps, modes, and more to the community on a frequent and consistent basis. As an Overwatch fan, of course, that's music to my ears. We know that's the community's top Every priority. And weeks? we feel like we have the right approach to be able to deliver that for them well into the future. How are you and the team planning to deliver on that promise? 
Uh, well, the very first step is getting the game into everyone's hands, and that's going to happen on October 4th when we transition Overwatch 1 and invite every PC and console player to drop in and experience Overwatch 2's reimagined PvP experience. And that's just the beginning. Our plan is to deliver a steady drumbeat of new content every nine weeks through free seasonal updates, ensuring that there's always something new to play, chase, every and Every nine weeks updates Overwatch with 2. new content? Well, that all sounds amazing, and it's so much of it, too. And now, I am sure everyone at home wants to hear more details. Of course, uh, I'd be happy to share a look at the road ahead. Our journey is going to begin on October 4th, when Overwatch 2 releases free to play. This includes three new heroes, six new maps, a brand new mode, and more. The new heroes include Sojourn, Junker Queen, and a brand new support hero that we'll reveal in the months ahead. Our new maps will take players across the globe to iconic oh! locations. Oh! Our new PvP mode How called dare Push, you! will challenge teams in new and exciting ways. Players will also be able to unlock new cosmetic items through the in-game store Wait, that looks sick. and battle pass, as well as complete weekly challenges and experience the start of competitive play 2.0. And of course, everyone will also be able to access the revamped heroes, PvP maps, and fan favorite game modes from the first Overwatch game. Our next season will arrive in early December, where we will introduce a new tank hero, along with a new map. Uh, do, 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 we'll have more whoa? themed cosmetic items you for myth players to earn What is this mythic skin? An all-new battle pass and also in the in-game store. And in 2023, we'll continue to release a new season every nine weeks with either a new hero, new map, or new mode. Players will get the chance to earn more themed content, complete weekly challenges, access new battle passes, and more. There will always be something new to play. In 2023, we'll also begin releasing our new PvE experiences, which we're really excited about. We're really looking forward to being able to share Holy more with the community hell. as we get closer to releasing them. I know we've seen more and more games shift towards that free-to-play model in recent years, and it really mm. does seem like players have taken a liking to it, especially shooter fans. Um, did that have an impact on deciding to make Overwatch 2 uh, go free-to-play? Honestly, not really. For us, free-to-play games offer a lot of advantages. From the very start, Overwatch was designed to be a social experience. We have heroes of different roles, and they all rely on each other in, in order to accomplish their objectives in the game. So it requires a lot of teamwork. Mal tingly chat. I'm not gonna lie, I'm all tingly. Of our game within our community, with fan art, cosplay, and the Overwatch League, we know our fans are having the most fun when they're playing with their friends or meeting new ones. And the move to free to play makes it easy for everyone to just drop in play the game, join the community, whether they own Overwatch 1 or not. And with Overwatch 2 crossplay enabled, people can play together no matter what platform they prefer to play on. It's always been a game that stood for inclusivity and community. When they see the roster of heroes, we want them to feel like there's someone there that they can feel connected to. Because the Overwatch universe is and always will be a place for everyone, and we feel like we have an incredible opportunity with Overwatch 2 to really embrace it. I can't wait for October when this incredible journey will begin for all of us. Now that we have a better understanding of what's to come, I'd love to dive a little deeper, uh, starting with Overwatch 2's new approach to PvP. Can you maybe elaborate and explain a little more? Sure. PvP has always been at the heart of the Overwatch experience. And Here it comes! We've made some tweaks to it over the wait, years, maybe? but Overwatch 2 really gave us oh, the opportunity actually, to nah. put the mode under a microscope. <laughs> and we really wanted be... players to feel that they had oh, more man. impact Wait, in a is... match. And we've made significant fundamental changes that we just couldn't do in the current live game. This was a foundational shift that changed everything. Heroes, maps, and more. So we had to reevaluate every aspect of PvP to ensure we got it right. We've been encouraged by player feedback from the first beta, and we will continue to make updates and improvements in the game. Well, earlier today, I had a chance to sit down with a few additional members of the Overwatch team and hear more about all the work they're doing to redefine PvP in Overwatch 2. Where's so PvE? let's take a look. Okay, so, okay, they're showing PvP, the so PvE's coming. Gets us up in the morning, happy to work on Overwatch. It's first and foremost a really special game. The way we portray a bright future, everyone on the team is really proud of it. We're bringing an all new PvP experience. We're transforming from a 6v6 to a 5v5, 
changed a lot of how we design heroes and actually how we balance them as well. We had to go back and look at all the heroes and all the tanks especially and make sure that everyone fits and works really well in this new paradigm. This newfound importance on each individual player to feel like they can really make an impact on the game. We're trying to obviously maintain the original character's identity and overall silhouette, colors, statements, but also kind of bring something a little bit new. Like a hat. We can make balance adjustments really quick, as fast as our design team sees that there's an issue. Jeff Goodman and the rest of the hero design team have been loving all the feedback coming in. They have tons of awesome ideas about uh, how to change or uh, adjust balance. So heroes like Arissa got a, a major rework. We're looking at how many barriers are in place. You think about Overwatch, you think of these really protective shields. But we're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, what if she didn't have that? What would that even look like? We're just always looking for great opportunities to change for the better. I'm really excited about how we've refreshed uh, all the maps. I think we've done a lot of great changes, especially Wait, for PvP. Wait, refreshed all the maps? A lot of our old stuff just looks gorgeous now. We've done a lot with the art and with lighting and shadows and just made stuff pop a little bit more. We also added some options with like daytime, nighttime. I think all of the Overwatch 2 maps are custom recorded in the actual place. We've hired a field recordist to actually go capture ambience of the real world location. We realize it's a subtle detail, but those are the things that the really make these to maps go touch come grass. to life. We have done a pass playing all the old maps in 5v5 and adjusting things for that kind of setup, whether it's moving cover around just a little bit or tweaking a door. In the beta, we're listening to feedback, so we're going to improve <laughs> each map based on what the players have been saying. We've been working on these for a little while now, and we're really excited about it. We were really happy with the positive feedback once people were able to play it, and I think it was an important milestone for us to get it in players' hands. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What does that mean? Competitive play is a different thing to a lot of different people, and we really didn't think we were providing enough tools and measures to actually help players out if they did want to improve. We're reworking our scoreboard to provide more information uh, to players as they're like, playing through the match. But then once they finish the match, we're actually going to provide an after-action report. So you can look at the report Wait, while you're what? in queue. You can actually go into uh, your history section and look. We want to work towards providing you with information that will help you improve your game. We've Yo, been getting feedback that's from a lot actually of huge. from our you know, community team, like streamers, influencers. We've also been getting a lot of feedback from Overwatch League players. We do want to actually provide a bit of like feeling of progression. So one of the other changes we're making alongside that is not making your skill rating quite so granular. Right now, it's a very hard number. Instead of a numeric skill rating, we're adding these skill tiers within the larger ones. If you see someone Wait, what? at a really high skill tier, you know that that person is not just that good of an Overwatch player, but they've earned it. What does that mean? Like Apex? Oh, wow. Oh, it's cool like Apex. About Overwatch too, is it has this new push game mode and maps along with it. Push is a PvP game mode on several different new maps. We've been playing it in the beta, and we've actually been using it in Overwatch League as well. And once we started playtesting it, it was kind of an instant hit. There's a level, it has one path that goes all the way through it from one base to the other. And in the middle is TS1. And he's this lovable robot with a pair of barricades next to him. And the players are essentially fighting for control. And if they take control by taking out the other enemy team, TS1 will move a barricade towards the enemy base. To win, you either get that barricade all the way to the enemy base, or after a certain amount of time, did you move your barricade farther than the enemy team did? It's a very fair game mode. I think the maps are great. It provides for a lot of different like locations where a lot of great fights can happen. We've developed a lot of engine upgrades in the game, so this allows us to do faster iteration. This was a huge effort by our engine team to allow the art team to build faster, more detailed environments in a shorter amount of time. You will get to experience the game world. We wanted to feel much more immersive. God, that animation, though. Overwatch 2 is a dream for audio features. It's everything we've ever really wanted to do. We, we really go into every little bit of detail, trying to find 
uh, a way that every sound will cut through. When we started on Overwatch 1, we were really, really focused on the headphone mix. We, we thought for, you know, a PC-first kind of game, we realized that people listen to Overwatch in all types of different places. So now we support home theater Dolby Atmos in the game. Now consoles offer all kinds of new things too, like 3D Dude, that audio that so we're supporting. Cool. There's new voice lines, new conversations between all of the favorite heroes. And we have so many, there'll be more that'll just come to the game over time. We've written 25,000 voice lines for Overwatch 2. Going up. So, tons of new features. And the reality is that Overwatch scales even beyond that, all the way up to giant sports arenas for Did our say 25, finals. 25,000 voice lines? Everything you like about Overwatch, you're gonna get that in Overwatch 2, but even more. You know, we're really listening to that feedback. A lot of it we felt like, man, we really think this is going to be super fun and we just need people to be able to play it. October 4th is really just the beginning. I mean, just amazing work by the entire team. And I personally can't wait to finally get my hands on the full PvP experience when Overwatch 2 goes live this October. And October is just the start. As Paul mentioned earlier, Overwatch 2 will continue to evolve and grow over time. But what does that mean for us, the players? Well, I went behind the scenes to talk with the team working on new seasonal content and find out more. So let's take a closer look at what players can expect when Overwatch 2 expands post-launch. Seasonal content. We're really excited because oh, the people tingles will just is back, be able to baby. just fully immerse yourself in the maps and the storylines and the heroes. With the new seasonal model, we'll be able to drop a ton of content in very frequently as we're updating the game through these big seasonal drops. We're looking at releasing heroes every other season and then a map in between those. And on top of that, we're looking at dropping a ton of content map involving hero, skins map and hero. other great goodies for players what? to get their hands on for each seasonal drop. We have so much that we want to do in Overwatch to develop this game because we think it's the next step for us. We think there is so much more we can bring I'm really happy moving to our new seasonal based schedule, making this really huge commitment to regular updates. It's exciting at the same time because I know what this team can do. We really want players to be able to anticipate when things are going to enter the game. With all the new content and events coming in, it's even more important to just make sure that everybody knows what's coming. And along with the free-to-play change, we're doing away with loot boxes entirely. We have a new Battle Pass model coming in, and we have a store as well, so the players will have a lot more control about how they interact with the game and how they acquire new content. We've been working on so many things over the past couple of years. I'm most excited for folks to see some of the new heroes that we've been kind of cooking up. It's a bunch of different reasons why we choose to make a hero. We're trying to follow the narrative, pick the hero that makes sense, or do we need to create a hero that answers this meta, counters a certain strategy that's too strong in the game? We've got two more supports and another tank in just the first couple of seasons. And we're still working on new characters for a year, year and a half down the line as well. There's characters that folks have already seen glimpses of in the story. And there's also characters that you've never ah, seen dude. before, never heard about. Ah, dude, get your credit cards out. We were Shing. looking at Shing. making sure the new heroes fit within this new, very fast paced paradigm and less shields and crowd control. You can see a lot of that reflected in team play moments, but with a much faster paced vibe. We want to push the sci-fi, the futuristic feeling of maps. There's a touch of sci-fi everywhere you look. So this is something that was a little bit more subtle in Overwatch 1. We really want players to feel that the world takes place in not so distant future. Coming up next is Rio. Rio, a new PvP map. Pretty sure everybody's going to love that one as well. It's a great map. It's close to the team. Many people on the team are from Brazil. So it was kind of fun to Yo. inject the culture, the colors, the vibe That's into this beautiful. map. There's a map that takes place in Portugal. This map is pretty close to the team <laughs> because the our Portugal lead environment home artist, he's from Portugal. No, here they come. <laughs> People from the location should really get a sense that we've done a ton of research. And we were very inspired, and I think we captured it pretty beautifully in the game. It is a push map, one of the newest game modes, and we tried some pretty interesting layouts for this one, so we hope the players like it. We definitely want the game to feel like a globe-trotting adventure. There's new types of content from what you're Get used to in Overwatch them? 1. We have charms, we have banners. The current oh. Mikva skin that's in the works, that I worked on actually, is for Genji. He's got this kind of cyberpunk Japanese demonic theme. Mythic skins are meant to be this 
next tier of skins above Legendary. We want players to be able to go in there and pick and choose certain pieces meant to be this extra awesome Legendary Whoa. skin that you can customize. We're concurrently developing quite a few Mythic skins. They're gonna be released over the seasons. All this amazing stuff, all of the Ooh. amazing skins. For Weapon Charms, really what we're looking for there is, is our just for the players to be able to express themselves and dress their character up. One of our core tenants on Overwatch visually is to focus a lot on the first person view. We want you to be able to see it and enjoy it while you're playing the game. One thing that was really important to us was to make sure that players, if they earn anything in the game anywhere, that they're able to use it everywhere. So if you earn something on console or on PC or on Overwatch 1, you can always use it in anywhere in swipe, Overwatch 2 as well. Swipe, and with swipe, each new season, swipe. there'll be a ton of new content and a new battle pass as well. These seasonal updates will allow us to be constantly infusing the game with new content, new heroes, new maps. Yo, so the game's sick. just gonna feel fresh just all the time. There's always gonna be something for you to do or to work towards. There's never gonna be a point where you're like, gosh, I don't have anything to do. Being able to provide players with new heroes every so often, new maps. It is going to be a growing and evolving game. There's so much for us to explore as we move forward. Get ready, it's gonna be really exciting, really fun. With both PvP and PvE, there's going to be really great content for you to immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again with your friends. We can't wait for October 4th. We're just excited to be back. We're excited to be back. They know. I mean, it's so great to see how much thought and care your team is pouring into uh, really elevating the game through post-launch season. So you mentioned that PvE is coming in 2023. Now, can you tell us how the development is going and why the team is committed to bringing these type of experiences into Overwatch? We're all so invested in the world of Overwatch and, and the heroes. This is amazing. This is and great. And through the years, we've developed cinematics, animated shorts and graphic novels for our players who just want to get deeper We're into back. the lore. With PvE, we have an opportunity to go a step further, to go deeper into diverse storytelling in ways that we really just haven't been able to before. So we are planning to expand the Overwatch universe through these seasons that we just described, and we will start delivering this PvE gameplay in 2023. PvE will be delivered through the live service, and that means we'll be able to deliver and tell more Overwatch stories and create more opportunities to Wait, experience our heroes. What does that mean, Here's though? a sneak peek at what we're working on. The team's goal for PvE in Overwatch 2 is to oh. basically move the overall story of Overwatch 4. We've told a lot of short stories along the way. There are a lot of to-be-continues. It's time for us to oh. answer those questions, close off some of those stories, ask new questions. So the new game will definitely move the overall canon of the lore of Overwatch forward. Get those doors open! For the PvP live oh, service, God, for who's certain that? seasons, you're also going to get some PvE maps. You'll Is be that fighting a Mill Sector and at least some of the maps. They've come back and they're mad, so it's Overwatch's job to take them out. There's going to be content for you to Yo, immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again. A lot of the older guys from the original Overwatch team, they're coming back but they need help with some of the younger generation like Brigitte and Lucio. So we're going to tell the story of how Overwatch basically gets back together. Another thing we want to do with uh, the story is to showcase more of where the characters are from. For example, Torbjorn is from Gothenburg. Players will get a chance to see what Torbjorn's factory looks like. You can play PvE with your friends and immerse yourself in the world and stay inside of it a little bit longer. Wow, this is incredible. It's hey, so yo. great to get that first sneak peek. So what thank you so much for sharing that. Before I let you run off, is there anything you would like to say to the community watching? Yeah, we are so excited for today. And we're so excited for you all to be able to see everything that we want to show you. And we really cannot wait for October So 4th is the PvE this free? Together. Neither can I. I said it's now, part of the live we'll service. Let's take a deeper look at a brand new hero. That's right, Junko Queen, who will be playable for the first time during the beta later this month already. Now, before we do that, though, we thought we'd take a look at Junko Queen's origin story to get to know the next great Overwatch character a little better. Paul, Aaron, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Best of luck to you and, of course, your entire team as you gear up for that launch. Let's take a look. Oh, it's cinematic time! We're back. If there's any way to officially say that Overwatch is back, it's cinematics are back.
on Mixed Mutants Raiders. Many I'd slay. Junkirk Town is my domain. And when I'm done, none of this will remain. There will be a reckoning! Hold on. I, there's got to be more. Hold on. Wow, just wow. What an unbelievable new hero. There's and no we way will dive deeper right? into Jungle Queen. But first, I wanted to introduce art director Dion Rogers and a few new They're faces to us. the show. We have narrative designer Miranda Moyer and cinematic director Ben Dye. Thank you guys so much for joining. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for yeah, having us. Happy to be here. I'm really excited to share this. It takes Wait, that was just an army to create a game. <laughs> that, Ooh, that, mean, wasn't the, the, that wasn't the cinematic, that's the origin story. That oh. short was just so much fun to watch. Now, it's been such an exciting week for everyone watching, but I'm sure for you three as well. Uh, players have learned that the next beta is coming on June 28th. Can you tell me a little bit more about what we can expect to see in this beta? The biggest thing is open the console players this time. We're going to add a new map, Rio. Junker Queen will be playable finally. So this should be pretty fun. I mean, I personally can't wait to get my hands on Jungkook Queen. And you're representing her right there with the cool shirt as yeah. well. Uh, what a great segue. So let's talk more about the newest Overwatch hero. I think it's super exciting. I know everybody has been really anticipating this character for a long time. She's been super prominent in our lore ever since the Junkertown map came out. And I think people have really been looking forward to finally getting to experience everything that she has to offer. What makes Junko Queen so unique? And why do you think the OH players will love her? So Junko Queen is interesting. Usually when we start a character, we do a bunch of drawings and, and we have a little story. But she was kind of born out of the Junkertown map. We started to create this map that was associated with Roadhog and Junkrat. This narrative started to appear where they've been kicked out of the city. And so we're like, who kicked them out? And we're like, well, maybe there's some sort of leader. So we had the kind of Junkertown decree that you can see in the level. And then over time, it kind of developed that it was a queen. During the short, we're actually developing her personality. She's full of attitude. You know, that's what we love about her is um, she, she's really, really strong. So she's very recognizable. And obviously, the lore behind her um, is very interesting. So some of that potentially can bounce off what the, the game design will be. It's great to hear that it's just such a collaboration with the Overwatch team. Yeah, this is, this is a fun part about working together. Uh, the Overwatch universe, it's filled with memorable heroes. And as you said yourself, Ben, it does take a village of dedicated developers to really bring each one of those to life, but in a meaningful way. So let's take a deeper look at the making of Junker Queen. I just woke up, did I miss anything important? When we started on Junker Queen, oh, first we have to decide what kind of role she's going to take. So uh, she's a tank. She's a really aggressive tank. You know, we didn't want her to be kind of a Reinhardt style, stay back and guard her, her team. She's got this very ferocious nature and we wanted for that to be represented in her gameplay as well. Wait, how do I get Personally, the what shirt? I'm most excited about Junker Queen is just her big axe. You know, Did you guys see that? Swing that thing around is awesome. It's always great to have some sort of anchor point to make sure we really incorporate this axe into her oh. abilities. Her Secondary, we call Jagged Blade. If you do your quick melee attack, she will kind of swing with the blade instead of a normal punch. Um, it does a little bit of extra damage and creates a wound on the enemy. So she can throw the blade as her oh. secondary fire, and it's really a great a sort of skill shot to be able to land on the enemy, especially like a moving enemy if you can land it. And after you throw it, she'll recall it, and it, the force of recalling it, uh, if it's stuck into somebody, will actually pull them forward. So she can actually kind of pull people to herself if you can manage to stick that blade into somebody. For Jerker Queen's <laughs> ultimate, we have an ability called Rampage. She creates this kind of whirlwind of magnetized metal, including her weapons, and it whirls around her, and then she dashes forward, and you try to go through as many enemies as possible and tag them all up. That also wounds everybody, which is really important because it, it's very easy to hit them with this large area effect, so it heals you for a lot, but also it creates a debuff on the enemies that reduces the healing that they receive to zero. What, what do you mean reduces it to zero? So it's there. anti? She's full of snarky fun to the way she plays. So all throughout her kit, there's little guitar sounds actually hidden. So if you listen to her act, she pulls it out and there's a big screech on the guitar strings and she pulls it forward. We have a wonderful actor named Leah who we found after a huge global search trying to find the right voice for her. Here I am. It's really amazing when the right actor matches the character and the personality. You feel this sort of magic that comes out of it. I think players are going to love her. She's scary. She's awesome. She's a departure from any other hero that we have here. You know, this is just a straightforward, badass character. She's just been so much fun to work on, and I'm just so glad to get her in people's hands, finally. 
the queen of Junkatown has arrived. So how does Junker Queen We're going to go back to that later. The overall world of Overwatch. I think Junker Queen's pretty interesting because there have been previous rulers of Junkertown. Uh, Junker Queen was not always the queen. And the old rulers of Junkertown have always been kind of content to just, you know, lord over the city. But Junker Queen, she has very big acts and big <laughs> ideas to go along with it. What did you aim uh, to achieve when developing Junker Queen? We want to tell deeper stories for our heroes, have heroes that are connected to the world of the game. Big thing for Overwatch 2 is to move the lore of Overwatch along, so these type of heroes help that. What are her abilities, and how do those abilities actually make her successful in the role she's in? What's pretty awesome about this hero, she was developed when 5v5 from the start. She was never a part of the 6v6 world of Overwatch. Knowing she's the only tank on the team, what abilities that will help bolster the team. She has this commanding shout. It boosts the speed and armor of the heroes around her. So especially you need to push through a choke. She does the shout. All the players hear it. They move forward. I'm sorry. She has a bunch of Is weapons. Is this the you know, tank she, version of Anna and Lucio? Weapons, right? <laughs> yes, her, her knife that she throws and pulls back is named Gracie. <laughs> yes, right. A lot of her abilities kind of drain on the heroes and gives her health back. Her ultimate, basically, it shoots you forward and you do this whirlwind with her axe that it does she is like a big anti-nade on everybody yeah. around you. So she's very aggressive and, and people are going to have a ton of fun playing it. Are there any particular maps uh, you feel that Jungle Queen plays really well on? Getting close is where she's pretty dangerous. So maps that have a nice flank routes allow her to get in closer to the enemy and then start to do her. What she does best is reckoning. So another big oh, piece what? of news over the weekend so that got the Overwatch community just buzzing uh, with excitement uh, was, of course, the tease of your new cinematic trailer, The Wastelander, uh, which we're going to premiere here in just a few moments. But before we do, uh, Ben, can you tell us a little bit more about it? I remember in the in the very beginning of our story room jam sections, there's talk about what type of story we want to tell, right? Uh, should we include Junkrat? Should we include Rohag? But ultimately, I think we wanted to center focus our on focus on, on yeah. Junk, exactly on our main character. It's a character reveal. It's potentially a sort of a revenge origin story, you know? Actually give a little bit more lore into Junker Town, how she become the queen, how was that society um, being governed, you know, prior to, to she become the queen. Well, you and the team, you guys pour so much love and time into these cinematics and into these heroes that it really shines through. I want to thank all three of you for taking the time to sit down with me today and sharing all of this amazing information. Yes, yeah, thank you. Pleasure. I know the fans at home are on the edges of their seats so am I, waiting to see it. So let's take a look at the world premiere of the Overwatch 2's new cinematic, The Wastelander, featuring the latest hero, Junker Queen. Take them out with the rest of the garbage. Let the Wasteland deal with them. I'm not allowed to have a bad dream. No Wastelander has ever made it to the Reckoning before. <laughs> but here I am. A free for all. Zero rules. And the survivor gets the throne. <laughs> Welcome back, Shunker Jack. King Howell has never lost. Not in 13 years of rule. On the battlefield. <laughs> Not until today. The reckoning begins in five, four, three, two, one! Did you really think this would be a fair fight? 
don't survive the reckoning unless the winner grants your mercy. That's why I've got to win this whole thing. Alright, let's get this started. for this stronger. Not you be any better. At least I won't shoot my friends in the back. Same mercy you showed my family 13 years ago. Get out of my city. <gasps> you. Damn. Yeah! Junker Queen! That turned out alright, didn't it? But now they're probably wondering what sort of changes I'll make around here. Well, buckle up. They're about to find out. This is the legend of the Jugger Queen! Watch your back, see the hurt 
I reckon. Well, what the world's been telling me. To find out which currency. Oh, Dude, I'm literally like, going to cry. Well, that about wraps things up for today here at Blizzard. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and make sure to follow Play Overwatch on social for all the latest news and announcements about Overwatch 2. And I can't wait to see you all in game. Which one's your favorite? Mine's Tracer. She's like, she is not the cavalry team. You're one of those heroes, aren't you? Before me, I see the future. Human. Machine. You know there's more out there, don't you? Even the best journeys end. But a new one is right around the corner. One punch is all I need. It's official, chat. Overwatch is back. For real this time. Nice work, team. For real this time. Keep it moving. I'm saying, I don't know if this is replaying or if there's something maybe after this. I'm just wondering. Get in there. It takes a team to tango. Feels strong, man. Feels strong, man.